Oh, hey everybody. Uh, hopefully I'm going live now. I've been fighting with my computer, uh, which is why I now appear to be on my phone, which is not really what I wanted to do for this, since I'm going to have to be looking around, moving around, but the show must go on. So we're just going to fucking do it. <laughs> All right, so if anybody is seeing me right now, alive out there in video land, let me know. Uh, drop a comment. Let me know if you're hearing me, Lima Charlie, or whatever. Um, so, what I wanted to talk about today, and I apologize, I'm super flustered because I've been... Okay, Kaylee Dobbs says, hello, we see you. Can you hear me, though? That's also important. Um, what I wanted to talk about was a recent trip, which has been basically my entire life for the last year, figuring out. Okay, Gavin Dillinger says, hey -o. Okay, so hopefully you guys can hear me, I guess. Um, was my big trip to the UK this year. Okay, Gavin says yes. Okay, great, awesome. Um, so we have, my partner and I have been planning this for at least six, seven months now. Uh, we put probably way too much uh, effort into it. I'll even show you guys my, uh, since we're doing the phone thing. Uh, this is my whiteboard, which I normally share for, uh, um, you know, writing stuff. And instead, oh, well, the thing's flipped, but, well, it, God, sorry. Sorry about the technical issues, everybody. Uh, what this is was our plan for going to the UK, in case you can't tell because it's flipped. Christy Snyder says, hey, hey, Christy. You were the most vital part of this trip because you took care of our cats while we were gone and also left us some milk and cream uh, for the coffee when we got back, which turned out to be really important. So thank you for that. Um, so anyway, what happened was about, uh, yeah, it's going to be one of those stories. Probably about two, three years ago, um, I started working with uh, Kaylee Dobbs, who's in our, uh, chat right now. Um, I literally just put on my website, hey, I'm looking, Christy says you're welcome. Okay, awesome. Uh, I literally just put on the website, hey, I'm looking for somebody that needs some, some work done. Um, let me know. And she reached out and never met her before. Uh, we had interacted a little bit because she wrote for, um, Ginger Nuts of Horror, and I read, I still talk about uh, one of my favorite uh, articles. Air Studio is watching. That's also good. Uh, I could bring them on the video, but I suspect they do not want to be seen on this video. Which I've also taken care careful care with um, regarding the pictures I'm going to show you guys. Which I guess since I'm doing this on my phone, I'll have to... Um, Ring up on my computer and show you on the computer like a jabroni? Uh, I, I don't know. I genuinely, all afternoon, I've downloaded OBS. I've been fiddling with Skype, Zoom, Facebook Live, every conceivable thing. And now I'm using my fucking phone to do this. So sorry about that. Anyway, I started working with Kaylee, I think, about three years ago. She's in the UK. Never met her. Never laid eyes on her. Um, she wrote this really great article um, about zombies, which... You know, the, it was like the healing power of zombies, and it was, you know, really uh, poignant. And I said, okay, I know you can write. Yeah, I'll, I'll hire you. Gavin says, feet picks, please. You know, you're the one that's been talking about me going to Epstein Island and stuff instead of the UK, too, over on TikTok. And I'm not sure I want to go there with you, bro. Um, so, anyway couple of years working together, never laid eyes on, Kelly is getting married. And one day we get this uh, beautiful um, invitation in the mail. Would you like to come to Wales? We've always wanted to go, you know, somewhere. And after three years of fucking pandemic, we're like, you know what? You know what would be great? You know, I speak German. But my partner doesn't, you know, she's been a few places. She's been to the Dominican Republic, speaks Spanish, that kind of thing. Um, but we're like, you know what would be a good way to get our feet back into the pool of international travel? We'll be going somewhere like the UK. 
So we blocked it out for this year. And like I said, we spent a long time researching this, probably way, way more than we should have. Um, and that was like our whole year, everything that we, everything that we were doing. Um, so, um, we finally got down to it about two weeks ago, uh, going over for Kaylee's wedding. And we planned to go over for about two weeks. Oh, we got 10 people watching. Maybe this is a good time. I, so I selected this time because I was hoping that some of the folks that we met in the UK, this would be a little less ridiculous for them to log in. I think it's about 20 of 11 for them now. Um, you know, so maybe I get some watchers say, hey, is they going to mention us? Yeah, I probably am, actually, if you're watching this video. Um, Reynaldo Barbosa is watching. I don't know Reynaldo, but thanks for watching, Reynaldo. So I'm not going to bring you on either. Apparently you can just bring people into these videos. Um, so we did all this planning. I'll, I'll spare you all the boring details, except that, uh, I mean, some of the interesting stuff, there's, there's a lot of great advice out there. There's a lot of shitty advice out there too. Um, but one of the things said, no one in the UK, men in the UK don't wear shorts. And only Americans wear baseball caps and um, graphic tees, which is pretty much all I wear. So I was like, I don't, I don't wear baseball caps, but um, I pretty much just wear shorts and, and graphic tees, especially in the summertime. So we had to make decisions like, to, like, oh, okay, we're gonna pack differently. We're gonna look out for, uh, you know, pickpockets. Apparently, London is a hotbed of pickpockets, and we're all worried about the pickpockets, um, and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, let me pull up my notes here. Uh, in any case, finally the day comes. Somehow, uh, you know, we spent all this time getting ready for this thing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I worked on Monday. We departed on Tuesday. I even worked on that Monday. And I was like, do I have everything done? Am I ready to actually go to the UK? Do I have enough light? Maybe I should have some light on. Um, so, Tuesday... We departed. Yeah, that's better, I think. You guys just let me know in the comments if uh, anything looks weird or anything like that. Um, so, we left the house around 9 a.m. on Tuesday, took an Uber over to the Harrisburg train station, where we caught a train for beautiful Newark. Um, so, you know, th so we wouldn't have to park the car and everything. Uh, we discussed whether we should get a car while we're in the UK. My partner is an extremely good, uh, Gavin Dillinger says, looks fine. Okay, thanks, man. Hey, Nacho Malo is watching. Hey, Nacho, thanks for tuning in. Um, so we talked about it, but we're like, my, my partner is extremely good at stick. I haven't driven stick since the war. Uh, I drove a freaking <laughs> stick shift van. I, that's where I learned was in Iraq. So I could probably figure it out. Um, but neither of us wanted to learn how to drive on the left-hand side, so we're like, eh, fuck it, we'll just take trains everywhere. It seems like the UK has a really good, Nacho says, yo, yo. Uh, UK has a really good, you know, public transit system, and so on and so forth. So, uh, we left our cars behind, get on, you know, go down to Newark, and we also, this is our first time, and it's sort of bragging, but it's whatever, um... We also flew business class, which I, I've never done before. I don't think my partner ever has either. But we were like, you know what? We're going to be in a plane for 11 fucking hours. Let's fly, fly business class, find out what that's like. Let's see how the other half lives. Um, so we get to the airport, and it turns out Eric Hall is watching. Hey, Eric, uh, thanks for watching. I'm not going to bring you on live either, but I see that I can. Um, so one of the benefits is... We can hang out in the lounge. And also, neither of us has ever been in an airport lounge. So we go to the Lufthansa lounge, and we're like, what is going on here? And I know my partner was looking at me like I'm a crazy fucking person because there's just, there's not a bar. I mean, there's a bar, but there's no bartender. There's just a fucking wet bar. And you can just go and make drinks and have whatever the fuck you want at the Lufthansa lounge in Newark. So, yeah, I know. I'm easily impressed. And they got food, and they got couches, and they got everything. We're like, 
okay, I guess our, you know, four or five hours or whatever in Newark is going to be no big deal. So we just sit in the lounge. We're like, oh, my God, this is what rich people live like. It was great. Um, and then we left around 830 that night. And we were flying. Okay, Jamak. Hey, Jamak. Thanks for tuning in. Um, hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, just let me know. So we stopped over in Iceland. Now, the funny thing about it was we're flying Iceland Air, right? So this country of, you know, 400,000 people or whatever. All the announcements are in Icelandic and then in English. And I'm like, well, okay, it's their national thing. But I don't know how many Icelanders or whatever are flying on this plane to, you know, London. But we stop in Iceland. And it's, as, you know, as far as we can tell, it's just a really beautiful little country. We, all we did was have two layovers there, so I'm not going to front like I did anything. But it was really cool. Um, I remember my partner said at the end of Wednesday, I guess, that we within 24 hours we had been in four countries, which was nutty. Um, considering, like I said, you know, I haven't been anywhere. I haven't been anywhere in 10 years. The last trip I went internationally was 2013 to um, Montreal. And, uh, you know, to be in four countries in 24 hours was crazy. So we land in Iceland, do a little uh, stopover, and you can smoke in the airports in Iceland. I was like, oh, that's right, we're in Europe. I forgot. You can stop and smoke. Um, we did not have enough time to hang out in the lounge there. Uh, but that's all right, because we're pretty much just on to our next plane. Um, oh, by the way, I, I, if you guys have any questions or anything, um, you know, if you want to ask me about what the king looks like or anything like that, uh, you know, just put it in the comments. Uh, that's your benefit. That's one of your benefits for watching live is getting to hear all of my opinions and responses to your questions and comments. Um, so, uh, we landed in London. So that was the thing. The cheapest flight was Newark to London. Um, and we arrive at Gatwick. And I was talking to one of my employees today, and they're like, why didn't you fly into Heathrow? And I was like, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> you know, I'm already shelling out for the business class. This was the cheapest thing I could find. What I found, found out was Newark is like the bullshit airport of New York City. Gatwick's like the bullshit airport of London. So we got to see all the, like, oh, that's the place that claims it's in the you know, metropolitan area, but it's actually a half hour out of town and you've got to take 15 fucking trains to get anywhere. Alyssa Mercado is watching. Hey, Alyssa, thanks for tuning in. Okay, somebody's laughing at, I guess, must be a Gatwick person or an anti-Gatwick person, I should say. So, um, we did then. We have not slept in, oh, God, 18 hours or something at this point, and we're in a foreign country. We get on a train to, like, actual London, uh, like, oh, I forget, Farrington Station or something, and we have to get this train to go to Cardiff, right? So um, the wedding's on Friday. Um, we're in London because that's where you have to land. Like, flying into Cardiff directly is, like, a million dollars. So we have to get on a train to go to Cardiff. Because the we arrived on Wednesday, we have to be in Cardiff for the wedding on Friday. So we're taking trains here and there. I'm pressing the button uh, to ask the information god up in the sky, like, how do I get to Cardiff? How do I get to Paddington Station? How do I get to this? Oh, so we were in Paddington Station, uh, which I knew... I knew that the bear, Paddington, was named after the station, but somebody told me on this trip, oh yeah, Paddington the bear was found in Paddington Station. I don't know, I never read the book. I think I might have been a little too old for them. Peaceful Mwansa is watching. Hey, Peaceful, thanks for tuning in. Um, but yeah, we were in Paddington Station at one point, and it's like it's nutty. You know what it's like uh, trying to figure out public transit in your own country. And then you go somewhere where, I know, it's the same language, but it's kind of not. Like, everything Everything we were always kind of like, what are you asking us for? Because, like, I'd call a restaurant and I'd be like, I want a reservation. They'd be like, what? 
And I'd be like, uh, booking? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what we call it here. I'd be like, okay. So it's the same with uh, just all that basic stuff, like trains and platforms. And uh, yeah, the famous thing in London is mind the gap, which we'd say, like, watch your step or something, I guess. I don't know. So anyway, finally, we get on the train to Cardiff. And we are genuinely going at like 24 hours with no sleep at this point. And we had all these plans. If you guys looked at my uh, little thing on the wall up there, we had all these plans to go to the castle in Cardiff and, you know, see, oh, see the Welsh countryside. So I'm like pointing out the train car window. My, my partner loves animals of all sorts. And so as we're in Wales, uh, I guess Wales and England both are like sheep country famous i don't know i did we i picked up pieces of history and and culture and stuff there i gather at one point it was big textile things so now there's a bunch of sheep left over from that but like not everybody needs sheep all the time now but there's still just flocks and flocks of sheep everywhere um so every time we were rolling through the welsh countryside and i'm like oh look baby there's a sheep and she's so tired she's like you know and by the time she turns her head around she missed the sheep kaylee dobbs scotland is also sheep country i think i warned you that the sheep rule us all okay that's good to know this is better than boris johnson or somebody zing uh okay so uh we get to cardiff and, uh, you know, and I also want to apologize, Air Studio. We slept Monday night before we left and didn't sleep until Wednesday night. So good two days. Yeah, it must have been 36 hours, something like that. Um, so, and I want to apologize. There were people that I wanted to meet in the UK. And I didn't. I apologize, especially if you're watching and you know who you are. Um, but when I got to this point, I was like, we have had no sleep. We're not doing anything in Car Cardiff is off the menu. We're not seeing whales. Lordu Sarisha. Oh, hey, Sarisha. That's, uh, I know who that is. She's a great, great person. Great friend of mine. Um, wife of a great friend of mine. Hope you're doing well. Um, Suleiman. Suleiman is also watching. Hey, how you doing? Um, so we, uh, what was I saying? Oh yes. I wanted to apologize. There were a couple of people I wanted to meet while we were in England and Wales that I was like, mm, I'll see if they're available. I'm really sorry. Not this time. We will definitely, definitely be going back. First of all, that's number one. We will definitely be going back. So Kaylee set up the guest room. Um, number two is, I felt like the whole thing was a lot more fun whenever we were hanging out with people we knew and not like trying to chat with the concierge or the waitress or whoever. Um, so I'm going to make a point to meet some of my uh, British friends. Christy says, okay, that's, well, I guess maybe the word's out, but all right, it's in the comments now. Amy, my partner. Amy missed the sheep. I am shocked. Don't worry. Don't worry, Christy. Spoiler alert. There are many, many sheep to come. Um, so anyway, yeah, just, we just completely crashed. Oh, so there was, you know, a block at the wedding, but we couldn't, uh, for some reason, get in to the hotel on Wednesday. We could only get in for the wedding block. So we have to go to this other hotel that's down the, down the way a little bit, um, which was called Manor Park. Uh, whatever. I'll, I'll tell you guys all the places we stayed. Part of the reason I'm doing this now, and I was kind of a little bit uh, not talking about it beforehand or during. Uh, obviously, we don't you don't want people to know you're out of the house. Certainly don't want people to know you're out of the country, even though, again, like I said, Christy, Christy and her partner were watching the house and the shop and uh, keeping a good look on things, keeping a good eye on the cats. Thank you for that. But even so, you might as well put up a big Rob Me sign out there. So... Uh, why was I saying that? Oh, because, oh yeah, because I'll tell you about all the places that we went, if you're, if you're interested. So we stayed at this place called Manor Park, and it's fucking faulty towers. 
if you guys have ever watched that show. I was immediately like, what is going on here? Chris Singletary is watching. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Thanks for tuning in. So the guys like to... Br oh, hello, welcome. We have your booking, sir. How lovely to see you. And I'm like, what is going on right now? And they give you a key. It's like a physical key. I can't remember the last time somebody handed me a physical key for a uh, hotel room, you know? Uh, but I'm like, okay, when in Rome, right? So, you know, we go up. We're like, let's have dinner because we're literally just going to die uh, if we don't have dinner, like, right now. So we go and we have dinner at the Manor Park, and it's this lovely dinner. And this was just a place that we had just, like, picked out. But, again, they're like, oh, tea, sir, and this and that. And I have to have the uh, lamb. I know... Uh, Amy will be mad at me about that. She doesn't eat lamb and doesn't like people eating lambs. But I'm like, hey, I'm in Wales. Got to have the lamb. Um, so, you know, it's very nice. They're doing the whole, like, you know, got, waiter with the thing over his, with the towel over his sleeve thing. You know, the whole fucking thing. Um, so it's really nice, really nice hotel. And so, wake up in the morning, and we're like, okay, so we have to go to this hotel that's up the hill. It's like, it's supposed to be 15 minutes away, um, like by walking. So we're like, okay, we're, you know, we've got our, we've got our bags and stuff, but we had purposefully packed like, okay, let's not go crazy, you know, on the packing. Um, let's really just bring like a backpack to Europe, uh, you know, and, uh, like wash. So when we got to London, we had a washing machine and we're like, okay, so really we only have to pack for a couple days. We'll get to London, use the washing machine, blah, blah, blah. So we go and we're, we're going to walk. We're like, oh, I forgot. Before that, we had our first full Welsh breakfast at, um, the Manor Park. So that was the other thing that was really nice. Apparently, everybody in Great Britain just eats breakfast out the asshole. It's just like, you know, fucking eggs and tomatoes and mushrooms and baked beans, which I don't understand, but again, when in Rome. Um, and what else was it? Uh, oh, so Welsh breakfast, as opposed to English breakfast, has these seaweed cakes called la lava bread. And uh, what else? It's just a bunch of shit. They're just like... Here you are, sir. Here's your full English breakfast. And I'm like, I just woke up. I don't even normally eat a Pop-Tart, but okay, fine. I'll eat this enormous fucking food that you put in front of me. So we have our Welsh breakfast. We strap on our backpacks. We're supposed to go walk this 15-minute walk. Oh, whatever. We'll take a little 15-minute walk through the Welsh countryside. I swear to God, this is at a 45-degree angle. And we're like, ugh, ugh, ugh. Like trying to get up to this, uh, the wedding venue. Kaylee Dobbs, baked beans are a breakfast staple, a staple, I tell you. Uh, do you eat staples too? I, I don't, I don't understand the baked bean thing. Uh, but they brought them out at the Manor Park. They brought them out in this lovely little gravy ladle. They're like, here's your baked beans, sir. Okay. Thank you. Lovely. Um, oh, one thing I will tell you that they do that is smart is their tea kettles are electric. So all you have to do is plug the tea kettle in and then it's, you have tea. So go figure land of tea. They've got it all figured out. It's like a million times better than, uh, you know, having to boil the tea. Uh, but the counterpoint of that is no fucking coffee is available anywhere. I will, I'm sure I will rage about that at length later on. But anyway, um, so we're huffing and we're puffing and my partner's like, are you sure we can go on? Like, we can call Kaylee and have her pick us up. And I'm like, we're not having her pick us up on her wedding the day before her wedding. I'm like, I can do anything for 15 minutes. And I just kept saying, that. we're like, I can do anything for seven minutes as like we're going up this, this hill. So yeah, it's been a while since I was in the army. I know. Um, but yeah, that's, it was, it was fun. So we get up this hill, we're just covered with sweat. We're just like out of breath, 
horrible middle-aged old fat Americans. Um, and we huff and we puff into the vetting venue and they let you drop off your bags. So this is a cool thing. Another cool thing we found out about Europe or the UK is a lot of the hotels have this bag service where you can just be like, I'm not checking in till later. Can I leave my bags here? And they're like, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and we walk outside and there's Kaylee and her fiance dropping off decorations or something. And, uh, and we're like, we are so disgusting. Um, let's just see if they come talk to us. And if not, we will play it cool for right now. So thank God they didn't. And we're like, all right, so we got a couple hours before we can check in. But like, we're on this beautiful, uh, you know, scenic Welsh, um, view. So, and again, I apologize if you guys missed the beginning. I know I suck. I am terrible at technology. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my phone around and, oh, can I do, no, can't do the thing. All right, I'm going to, oh, wait, yeah, I can't. All right, let's see if this works. All right. Okay. How's that? Rotate your phone. You can't turn your phone. Well, okay. So here's this Welsh countryside. Yeah, I get, I know it's a photo on my computer. I get it. Um, so this is, this is beautiful, you know, a hotel set on this scenic thing. And that's Cardiff. That's Cardiff in the background. And that was the most we got to see of Cardiff. Again, I apologize to, you know, my Welsh friends and fans. I will get with you next time. I swear. I swear to God. Um, and we're like, you know what? Let's just hang out here. We can hang out here for a couple hours. This will be nice. Um, and they have these beautiful gardens full of flowers. And what comes with flowers? Fucking bees. B rolls out and stings my partner. We're like, okay, uh, hopefully you're not allergic because uh, we don't know anything about healthcare. I, I gather there's good healthcare. We do know 911 is treble nine or 999. Amy Lauer is watching. Okay, bring them on the video. I can bring you on if you want. Just say the word. Uh, <laughs> or if you have corrections to make, you can make them in the comments. Um, yeah, so 999, but, you know, she's, she's hurting, we've been walking, we're pouring with sweat. I know, middle-aged problems, right? Um, fat American, fat rich American problems. Uh, so we're like, okay, let's just go inside. Now you notice I say this is a wedding venue. It's because there was a wedding the day before, too. So there's all these wedding guests, and here's, you know, disgusting us, drenched with sweat, like trying to hide in a corner of the lobby, away from everybody that obviously knows each other, for like two, three hours. We're like, okay, all right, fine. We make it through, um, and immediately crash again. So sorry to the beautiful country of Wales and the beautiful city of Cardiff. We saw none of you. We did see some TV, and... <laughs> as long as I'm talking about TV, I did not know about the penis comparing show. Uh, this is a really fun show called Naked Attraction on British television, where they just line up five pe guys from the penis, and they're just like, which penis do you want? And then the lady picks it. And I'm like, why is this on TV? Uh, you know, like I've been to Germany and stuff, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. After 9 p.m., the softcore porn starts on, you know, broadcast television. Uh, but we really enjoyed the penis comparing show. Um, and then what was the other show? There was a show called Goggle Box, which was just British people watching British television, which was much funnier than the most of the British television. Uh, so we're going to try and figure out how to watch those back in the States, but... I will, let, I will let you know. More to follow on that, no doubt. Um, so, we have plans now this evening uh, to finally meet up with Kelly. So, uh, again, like I say, you know, somebody I've worked with for, you know, two, three years, you know, consider a very good friend, um, trusted her on a lot of projects that we've worked on. We're working on the Perfectly Fine Neighborhood uh, together right now, um, along with, uh, Wiley Young. Scarlet Red is watching. I don't, 
I don't think I know you. I do know somebody named Red, but hey, Scarlet, thanks for tuning in. Um, I think Red Lego is somebody else, but you are most welcome, Scarlet. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so we're sleeping. We're watching the penis comparing show. Um, finally, I think I go out to have a cigarette. And here's Kaylee and her um, maid of honor. I just like see them in the hallway like, oh, hey, you know, so we finally got to meet. It was really cool. Uh, somebody from India maybe is watching. Hey, thanks. I'm sorry. I cannot read um, Hindi script, but thank you for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying it. Um, so just saw her in the hallway and then she's like, oh, yeah, she invited us to uh, dinner that night. So... We're at, uh, what was the place called? It was called the New Country. I'm looking at my whiteboard where I have all the things down. It's called the, oh, the New House. The New House Country Hotel. So this is this, the wedding venue I keep talking about. Um, so around seven, we finally go. And we get to, you know, so I get to see um, Kaylee's uh, maid of honor, uh, Tosh, again. And uh, her mom. Uh so mom comes out and she's like, oh, Stephen, I want you to meet. This is my mom. And I was like, oh, hello, mom. Do you, do you have a name or should we call you mom? Uh, so mom does indeed have a name. It's Debbie. And mom is the one that does all of the uh, goats, the crocheted goats for the happy goat horror, which you guys are probably seen if you run in our circles uh, so i finally got to meet mom i finally got to meet debbie who does all the goats and finally got to sit down and have a in living person conversation you know with you know a good friend of mine for the first time um and i realized afterwards that we t successfully managed to talk about uh sex politics and religion at that uh, dinner with people we with <laughs> stra essentially strangers and people we had just met um but for some reason yeah we were i don't know and i was like oh those are the three things you're not supposed to talk about and we covered them all um oh yes so then kelly kelly's like i got you guys some snacks and I keep hearing about these snacks. Every time she's working, it's snacks. So I have the snacks here. Steph Tran. I am still stuck on the penis show. I, I'm not making it up. I swear to God. It's called Naked Attraction, Steph. All right. Let's flip the screen. You know, actually, this is kind of working out better than any of the other systems that I had. Uh, so, oh, so... In Great Britain, prawns are shrimp, not like our prawns, which I think are big shrimp, but all shrimp are prawns. So here's prawns, Pringles. That's not actually what these are. These are Jaffa cakes, which are like orange cookies. These are twiglets. Oh, I'm doing a great job with the video recording. Uh, Jean McCorkle is watching. Hey, thanks for tuning in, Jean. Uh, twiglets are like pretzel, oh, Jess Bolio, hey Jess, uh, twiglets are like pretzel sticks, but with, um, liquid smoke added, what else do we have in here, um, oh my god, so much stuff, oh yeah, the flapjacks, the Welsh cakes, um, we ate a lot of it while we were over there, but there's still a lot left, so, these are the famous uh, British snacks, which actually came in super handy when we got to Bath, which I'll talk about, although I'm already going on 40 minutes, so. All right, let's flip it back over. Okay, so snacks. Oh, and the other thing I should show you, I finally got my copy of Corpsing signed by this no longer, I confirmed it today, the no longer to be Kaylee Marie Edwards. Um, so this is a uh, collector's items now. Um, 
Yeah, so that was a long trip to get a signed book. Um, so Gene and Jess, I'm not going to be bringing you onto the video, <laughs> if, unless you really, really want to. Oh, right, so Kaylee comes out and is like, here's your snacks. Okay. Uh, and we had also brought snacks for the wedding. So we live very close to Hershey, Pennsylvania. So we have access to all kinds of snacks, the likes of which no one in the UK has ever seen. Um, apparently. Like, there is apparently Hershey's, some Hershey stuff over there, but not, like, the ridiculous nonsense that we have. Um, now, I don't know if I've ever told this story, but if you guys like Whatchamacallits, and I saw we had some Whatchamacallits in our snack pack, y'all can thank me for that. Because in the 80s, I was one of the first people to ever try a whatchamacallit. You know, there's when you used to go to the mall and they'd be like, hey, do you want to try something and tell us about it? What do they call those things? Focus groups. I was on one of the first focus groups for a whatchamacallit. So if you guys like whatchamacallits, you can thank me for that. Um, which I haven't thought about in going on 30 years. But true fucking story. Anyway... I'm boring everybody with the snack talk. We're down to, we're, we're down on, on listeners, so I'll, I'll step it up. Kelly Dobbs. Oh my God, I'm eating that literally right now. Ha 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 ha. Good, good. Um, so, meet everybody, get the snacks, go to bed. Next day, it's like full wedding day, full wedding mode, right? So... I took notes for about half of this, and I gave up at some point last night. Gavin Dillager, Snack Talk is always welcome. There's also a British show called Snack Talk. No, not really. Um, all right, so I'm going to start freeballing in about 20 minutes here, but uh, for the wedding stuff, I have notes down. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Cardiff sightseeing did not happen. And sorry to my friends in Cardiff and so forth. Um, so I walk into the lobby and my partner is like, I don't, that's when it like dawned on us. We're like, we don't fucking know anybody. Only person we know <laughs> is the bride. And we like, I know, I don't even know the groom. Like I, the only thing I know about the groom is that sometimes Kaylee texts me instead of him. And uh, I did finally get to ask him because the one time I got the uh, the text was like, how are things going in the attic, babe? And when I met him, I was like, how did things end up going in the attic? And he's like, I don't know. I do go up in the attic quite a bit. I think that was his response. Um, but so we're like literally uh, like it's dawning on us like, oh, shit, what the fuck are we doing? Why did we fly 6,000 miles for this? We should have known better. And within like two minutes... Um, Two of Kaylee's friends are, are making friends with uh, my partner. So we're sitting down with Camilla, Camilla and Ellie. And they're just like, hey, we never met you before, but we saw you. We thought you looked lonely. Let's have a chat. Steph is laughing. Probably still about the penis show. Um, so they're like, oh, hey, you know, really good to see you. We don't know anybody here either. Like, you know, let's be friends, blah, 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 blah. And we're like, okay, great. Um, so, that, like, that was really cool. And, like, we really appreciated that. So, we're hanging out with them. We go up to the, like, the literal venue. It's, like, the tent outside. Um, and so, it's, like, ceremony time. So, the ceremony was, like, a civil ceremony. Oh, so there's these fans. You know, like, the... Like, the villain would, in, like, China, in, like, a 19th century, um, like, Penny Dreadful, like, the flip out to fan. There's these fans in all the seats, I guess, because it's just hot. Oh, yeah. So there's no air conditioning in the UK. It's just, like, always a temperate, temperate country, I guess. So, which is why, going back, this is a little bit of a callback for you guys that have been bearing with me for this full 45 minutes. I guess that's why men don't wear shorts, because it's just always temperate. Now, the fucked up side of that is it's always raining. 
So all of the hotels had, like, umbrella stands for you to just, like, take... Oh, well, it might be raining, so take an umbrella. Anyway. It's generally just cool, but I guess at this wedding venue, they're like, well, it could be hot. So everybody gets a little 19th century fanning fan, I guess. We're like, okay, cool. Um, then it was really, really sweet. I guess I, I must have heard the story at dinner. Um, I forget what the exact story was, but it really touched my cold, inhuman heart. Um, that Kaylee was like, uh, Debbie Phelps says, hello, hello, Debbie. I was just talking about you. This is, uh, mom. So, uh, I guess I'd heard the story and she's, it was something like, well, I don't want anybody to walk me down the aisle. The only person I want to walk me down the aisle is the love of my life. And you had better be there because I want you to support me and I don't want to trip or anything. So you better be there to walk me down the aisle. As we went up and, and he walked her down the aisle. It was really sweet. Um, and they did like the civil ceremony and it was, uh, there was like a, a lady and like the, um, account, like the, uh, notary public or something was like, Oh, after you guys have said your vows, come over here and sign the documents. So that was, uh, that was pretty neat. Um, and it was actually, it was a really, really touching ceremony. And, um, Tasha's kids, who was the maid of honor, um, were the ring bearer and flower girl. So they all came out. That was really sweet. Lori Wallace is watching. Hey, Lori, thanks for tuning in. Um, so drinks, yeah. Drinks, again, with Camilla and Ellie. And then we came back for the dinner. So let me see if... Oh, God. I did not set these up in any kind of order. All right. So you guys are just going to get what you get. Um, so here is the cake. So here's this beautiful, you know, gorgeous cake that everybody has. Um, however... If you know Kaylee, like I do, and hopefully this will work out and I'll get the right. Yes. Okay. And here's the back of the cake where you can see the uh, face huggers and the eggs from Aliens or, uh, you know, Alien Covenant, which is the best uh, Alien movie. Um, and I'm going to go back and forth because I have this in no kind of order, for which I apologize. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So here is, Slides is already running. Thanks, Slides. Oh, it's just glorious. Uh, my technology. Gavin knows. He's collaborated with me. He knows how great I am in technology. All right. So here's the centerpieces, right? And we're all looking at them. And this one is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon by Stephen King. Uh, so all the centerpieces were like, um... Stephen King books. That was really cool. And pictures of the wedding. I think I have a picture of... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've got video of it, too. But here's Nick and Kaylee cutting the cake. So I, have the, I also have that video. The cake that we just saw. And if you look close, you can see the... Um... Yeah, I know. This is a great way to do live video, isn't it, folks? Nope, can't, but if you look close enough, you can see the uh, face hugger, the face huggers crawling up the back and the flowers crawling down the front. Okay, so I think that's the wedding for now. Um, oh, yeah, so we have dinner, and again, we don't know anybody, and of course, our friends Ellie and Camilla, who we just met, are sitting at a different table because, you know, tables are all decided six months ahead of time. So I sit down and I get to meet uh, Justin Park, who I had not met. So I'm actually going to be writing off this entire trip as business expense because I'm sure at some point I discuss business and I definitely discuss business with Justin. So, you know, Justin's an author, let's see, on the Sinister Horror Company, I think, and he's getting really into filmmaking lately. Um, and I think he's a close collaborator with, um, Matt Shaw, who I've also, um, 
well, I've appeared, he, he's invited me to a few anthologies and that kind of thing. So, uh, I got to think and I was like, and this is one of the reasons why I'm like, oh, we, I really need to start going back to the UK is, you know, expanding my, you know, connections there. Um, so we got to sit with, uh, Justin and talk about all of his latest, um, stuff. He recommends, and he says, so everybody asks, what are you doing for the trip? Like, okay. We're doing Cardiff. We're doing Bath. We're doing Weston Super Mari, which is like a um, beach town over there, uh, and then London. And he's like, oh, I used to live in Bath. You need to check out the Frankenstein Museum. We're like, okay. Well, I get nothing in my head said to me, oh, there's a Frankenstein Museum in Bath. Um, so he suggests that. More to follow on that. Um, oh, he's been, he's been so... That was the part of the the wedding I, uh, that was, uh, aside from maybe um, Nick walking Kaylee down the aisle, was the uh, speeches. So Kaylee's brother tells this story about how um, when they were growing up, she would always be, I guess she's the older. Nacho says, if you could make a movie out of any of your books, which one would be your number one choice? Hematophages. And I have often thought about that. Uh... Because I think it could be done good with puppets. Not like crappy puppets, like Jim Henson puppets or something like that. Uh, like maybe I should say animatronics or something. I think that would be really cool. Um, I, would, I would want to see the hematophages, but I would want it to be um, standard uh, special effects, not just all CGI. Um, so, so, Justin, if you're watching and you're looking for a... Well, actually, Justin or Matt, Gavin says, Puppetry Horror is the best. It is. Puppetry Horror is quite good. Um, there was an episode of uh, Angel where the puppets, the vampires all became puppets. And there's a new book out. It's called, like, There's Muppets in My Walls or something. I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, right, right. The embarrassing story. So he's like, when... I guess Kaylee's the oldest, and she's, he's like, when uh, it was Christmas, she'd always come rushing downstairs, or rushing upstairs or something, and be like, he's Bean, he's Bean, Santa Claus is Bean, and um, would always like wake up her, her siblings like that, and even when she moved out, um, came back at like 5 a.m., and they had all been out drinking the night before, and shows up at 5 a.m. and is like, he's Bean, he's Bean, Santa Claus is Bean. Um, so that was really funny. Um, but I bring that up also as table setting for when we get to Bath. Um, so, oh, I forgot about this part. Crazy, the people you meet at weddings. Um, I guess maybe a year ago or something, Kaylee went, Kaylee went to a wedding. And set up some kind of thing. Well, anyway, this is the way she explained it to me. Where she was like, the people that were getting married are magicians. And we did something or other for them. So they're going to come to our wedding and do magic. At least that's the way it was explained to me. I don't know. I guess these things get lost in the translation. And uh, I was like, well, when does the magic start? Because I'm sitting through, you know, this whole wedding. And I'm like, I see no magic show. So I found out, I guess I must have misinterpreted that, but there was indeed a magician at the wedding. And all the people at our table were like, oh, that was the, so we sit down at this table with these, again, lovely people that were very nice to us. Um, and to introduce themselves, they're like, I'm a zebra. I'm a crocodile. I'm a baboon. And I'm like, okay, I'm a person. It turns out that they were all, um, you know, the, uh, action figures at a amusement park. And one of the things that they had to do when they were in the zebra costume or whatever, zebra, uh, that was, it, it kept getting, uh, they kept saying the zebra and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, was they would introduce the magician. And so they all know this magician and this guy, and apparently he's the greatest magician. His name is Danny Amethyst. Uh, that's his stage name. Um, so they're like, I'm like, I was, 
And at some point, I'm getting to know these people, and I'm like, you know, this is bullshit, because I was promised magic. And they're like, he's right over there, and we know him. And I was like, but I thought there was going to be a magic show. I'm like, no, no, but we will get you magic. And I'm like, okay. So Danny Amethyst comes over, and he is in full form. And I feel bad, because I'm, you know, it's like somebody walking up to me and be like, write a novel, asshole, well, on your day off. But he's very, like, he's you know, got a deck of cards, and he's very willing to do the whole thing for me and my partner. And I, he was really amazing. Um, he told this whole story. I don't know if any of it's true, but he told this whole cock and bull story about how he's in a special magical society with King Charles, Prince Charles, now King Charles. And um, here's the magic coin. And then the, the trick is the coin has the card. On it. it was just, it was great. I'm, I'm not doing it justice. Probably not doing any of this trip justice. And we're only an hour in, kids. Um, so I got my magic show. And again, I feel terrible. My apologies to Danny Amethyst for making you work on your day off. But I, to be fair, I was promised a magic show. So I, I got it. Uh, <laughs> Bill Fisher. How did I not know about this stream? I don't know, Bill. You need to fucking pay attention. Bill Fisher is watching. Bring them on the video. I'm not going to bring you on the video. Kelly says, that's true. It's called the Magic Circle, and I know it sounds made up, but I swear it's real. Are you also in the Magic Circle? Um, Bill Fisher says, awesome shirt. Oh, thank you. Uh, I sometimes feel a little weird going out with this shirt, because, of course, it's got... Um, I don't know if you can see it, because I, 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 all your comments are blocking me, but it's got Linnea Quigley naked. On oh, yeah, 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 there she is, right? It's got Linnea Quigley naked on it, but I think it's kind of, like, off a little bit so that I can go out with it. At least nobody's ever complained or said, sorry, I have children here, but whatever. Um, magic. This is going to be, like, a five-hour stream at this point if I don't get us out of Cardiff at some point. I'm sorry, but the wedding was, it was amazing. Like I said, I got to meet my friend in real life. Um, oh, right. So, Mike and Lorna, one was a zebra or a zebra, and the other one was a chimpanzee or something. Michael Trout, old Sergeant Trout from the Army. Hey, how you doing, Michael? Thanks for logging on. Um, old Army buddy of mine, I think, or else it's just another Michael Trout. Um, Bill Fisher, if someone is staring at your shirt that hard, they're the creep. Yeah, that. there you go. That's what I'll say. Fucker. Yeah, you can find enough pictures of Linnea quickly online, right? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, Mike and Lorna. So Mike Mike was the zebra, and Lorna was the, I don't know, ostrich or something. Michael Trout, great to see you. Great to see you, man. How you doing? Good to see you. Well, you should uh, chat when I'm not doing a thing with people. Um, I was telling them how long it's been since I've been in the army that having to walk 15 minutes uphill with my backpack in Wales was killing me. And, you know, we used to do that shit all the time. Um, in 120 degrees in fucking Iraq. Uh, so we slowly picked up that Mike and Lorna were from Weston, which was our next stop. It's like this beach town, right? So we're going over there and we're like, we're going in the middle of the fucking summer. We're not going to have our beach trip this year. Let's find a beach town. Gavin Dillager, got to drop off. Have a good evening. Okay, Gavin, talk to you later. Um, yeah, so, you know, everybody knows Brighton. But Brighton's on well on the other side of the fucking country. Weston is just on literally, I think you can, yeah, we could. We could see... Weston, we could see Cardiff from Weston. So they're just across this bay, right? Um, and we slowly picked up that Mike and Lorna were from Weston because we kept talking about going to Weston. And Mike's like, it's a shit town, don't go, have nothing to do with it, blah, 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 blah. And then at some point he's like, I could take you. He's like, you know, you're not really going to Weston. And we're like, yeah, we're going to Weston. And he's like, oh, so finally they offer to take us. And again, you know, Camilla and Ellie are just, like, introducing us. Mike and Lorna are just like, oh, let's take you, to, you know, off. 
which turned out, and <laughs> I feel bad. I should have, I should have bought him beer. Well, no, I shouldn't have because he was as drunk as a skunk. But I couldn't tell whether these were drunk promises or real promises. But at some point, we confirmed that they were indeed real promises, which was fortunate because there was a rail strike in England, or I guess Wales, the next day. So we actually needed a ride to Weston. And it would have been probably a million dollars on Uber and the guy would have never showed up. I don't know. So, uh, oh yeah. And we met Jimmy in Georgia. Um, so Georgia is like, uh, here was my great faux pas. I'm sure I made many faux pas. Um, but Georgia's like, I am a Republican. And I was like, oh, you're a Tory. And she's like, and I was like, oh, a small R republic, like, get rid of the monarchy Republican. She's like, one of those. Yes. Okay. And uh, she says, oh, so my partner is like, I want to try fish and chips every day that we're there. I'm going to try fish and chips in every city that we stop in. It's all I'm going to eat. Georgia says, try the French mussels. And we did when we got to Bath. And I'll pull that picture up. So Georgia, just so you know, if you uh, log in, we did indeed try the French mussels. And I agree, they are better than the fish and chips. Although I don't think my partner will agree. Um, so, uh, and then uh, Jimmy, her partner, is a jeweler of some sort but he gets very drunk and he starts talking about how he's going to put on all this weight to prove some kind of point to people at the wedding so he's just shouting about how he's going to start eating cadbury fruit and nuts for the rest of his life and go to a spa where they're blowing crisco into his mouth or something nobody knows why i still don't know why so jimmy if you're watching this let us know how that panned out and why it happened. Uh, I don't know. Um, Bill Fisher, I had a French mussel once from a hooker in New Orleans. I can't tell if that's a pun. Because wouldn't you, wouldn't you have to give her the French mussel? Wouldn't you have given her? You should have said... I gave a French muscle to a hooker in New Orleans once, but you're close. You're almost there. Keep working on it. Don't don't give up on the comedy career. You actually are a comedian, aren't you, too? Uh, somebody else is watching. And again, I apologize with an Arabic name. Okay. Uh, but thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry I cannot uh, read your name. Kaylee, I'm really enjoying these stories from my wedding because obviously I wasn't sat there for these conversations. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, we told you. We told you. You're only going to get to talk to anybody for five minutes. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so I already told this story. I, f I got to meet Nick and ask him what he was doing in the attic. So uh, that did pan out. Um, I think that's probably enough boring wedding stories for everybody. But uh, I did get finally get a picture. So let me flip that around. We finally got a picture of the French press crew together. So I was really happy about that. Didn't fly 6,000 miles for nothing. Um, but no, it was really lovely. Okay, Bill Fisher. No, that's a French muscle. A French muscle involves Texas toast and edible finger paint. You're almost there. You, you, you're getting there. You're very, very, very gradually getting there, Bill. Okay. So this is about the point where uh, Bill Fisher, and yes, I'm a mildly successful attempted stand-up law. I know, I, I know, I know my people. I, some of them I don't know on here. Oh, Sharmaki, Sharmaki Khalif Seed is watching. Hey, Sharmaki, thanks for tuning in. Uh, so I'm going to kind of go off the remaining photos, I guess. Um, and my notes. So, Saturday... Guess what? Full fucking Welsh breakfast again with the 
baked beans and the eggs and this sausage and the fucking bacon and that's what it, that's the other thing you have to have sausage and bacon and tomatoes and mushrooms god knows what all else um yes mike and lorna's offer would turn out not to just be beautiful drunk talk which was really convenient because there's a rail strike so this was actually really cool um, we did everything on the trains up until this point. So this is the first time we get to go on a British highway. Um, so Kaylee had morning sickness, I think. I told Nick he works fast. She couldn't make it to the breakfast. No, I don't know. She was sick or something. I mean, you know, it, you know what it's like doing a wedding. If you don't know what it's like doing a wedding, don't fucking do it. You know, it's, it's, it sucks. Um, so I'm sure she was just like... Um, so Mike and Lorna take us on the, uh, road. So we hadn't seen, you know, British roads. Um, and we, you know, we crossed a bunch of bridges. I'm sure my partner probably remembers what all the bridges were and everything. Uh, Ruslani is watching. Thanks for tuning in, Ruslani. Um, so we're going to West, we're going to Weston Supermare. Super Mare. I apologize. I speak German and French, and words still, they all fuck me up because I never know, like, if I was, if it was a French town, I'd say it a certain way, but I'm like, I'm kind of guessing that they don't pronounce it that way in Britain, so it's whatever. Anyway, that's my excuse. That's a good enough excuse. I think it's Weston Super Mare. so I'm just going to call it Weston. So we drive out there. It's this beach town. Mike drops us off. This is my second faux pas. I'm like, let me give you a couple bucks for gas. And he's, uh, of course, he's like, absolutely not, absolutely not. And I was like, ah, I should have said a couple quid for fuel, and then you would have taken it. But too late now. Um, so we just go out, and we're just on this beach all day. So I have this picture. I have lots of pictures. Debbie Feltz, Western Superman. Is that how it's actually said? Okay. Uh, okay. So here's the picture of the beach at Weston. And, and I picked out this picture because I think it's, you know, kind of the nicest. It's just like, it was so peaceful and, and such a break. Mare like the horse. You don't know, Amy Lauer. You're not from there either. Okay, somebody else is watching from India. I apologize, can't pronounce your name. Um, so, we're in Weston. Again, we just did like 36 hours on the fucking flight. Uh, we're like fucking pinballs, figuring out the British, you know, rail system all around. And we're finally just like, ah, we're somewhere. We can take a break. We can walk on the beach. And so we did. We just walked on the beach. And it's very chilly. You know, like I said, everything is just, like, chilly over there. Um, we go... They have, like, a sunset... Um, what do you call it? Uh, like, Overwatch. And we go to watch the... Uh, we go to watch the sunset, and we're like, Oh, yeah! That's the other thing about Britain. Muhammad Amir is watching. Thanks for tuning in, Muhammad. Um... Uh, it's always overcast. Oh, yeah. So, like, we... Mamoon al Gailani is watching. Hey, Mamoon. Thanks for tuning in. So, we can see Cardiff across the bay. Um, but the sunset is shit because it's completely fogged over. I'm like, oh, well, I guess that's all you get for a sunset in Weston. Um, oh, here's another interesting thing that I noticed in Weston. All the uh, hotels put out, and, and restaurants, I guess, put out bowls for the dogs. It's just dogs everywhere. It's just dog culture. The dogs were even worse than... There was somewhere where there were dogs everywhere. Uh, maybe it was somewhere in London. But they just put out bowls for the dogs. So you just bring your dog. I guess you go on a walk, and you're like, oh, here's a pub. Let me stop. Um, so we get up the next morning. And we're on our way to Bath. So at this point, I was actually like, you know, we've been in Cardiff for a couple of days, Weston for a day. We haven't done shit. 
We haven't seen this country at all. And, you know, everybody's going to say when we get back, well, why did you fly 6,000 miles to do shit you could have done here? You could have gone to the beach here, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like, well, you know, first of all, fuck you. I'll do what I want. Um, you know, I wanted to meet my friend and everything. Um, but at this point, we're ready to go, like, full tourist mode, almost. The, the day after will be full tourist mode. But we're like, okay, we got to get to Bath. So, um, we go outside and we're like, let's turn on Uber and, you know, give ourselves a full solid hour. This is where we find out Uber is not reliable, at least in Weston, Supermar. Um, I know I promised I wouldn't say it anymore. Uber is not reliable. We're sitting around for 45 minutes. I guess it's a Sunday morning. I don't know. Anyway. Finally, this nice, you know, concierge lady takes pity on us, and she's like, I called you a cab, um, but we're going to be late for our our train. Which, oh, by the way, the rail strike was, like, just for a day, so I guess it's just, like, very polite British rail strikes over there, where they're just like, we're just going to um, stop working for a day to let you all know how things would go if we wanted to do it longer. Which, I guess, thanks, guys, because then we weren't completely fucked on our trip. Although, you know, solidarity. I stand with the unions here or abroad or wherever. Um, so, we get this is the only time I've fucked up. I, I, we planned, like I said, for like eight months this year, we were planning this. Planned everything meticulously. Um, but we... Uh, this is the, uh, well, no, maybe two times I fucked up the transit system. But this is the only time I missed a train because we could not get there. So finally, the cab gets us there just in time to miss it. And I go to buy a train ticket and I entered round trip. So now I've gone like three times over the cost of what it should be. But all told, it was like $18 or something. So I was like, all right, whatever. Because Bath is like 45 minutes from West. So we go to Bath. And we're like, okay, finally, we're seeing, you know, some sights and stuff in Britain. So that's where we had, I already showed you the picture of the mussels, which Georgia had told us. So we get there to Bath and see, this is a callback. This is now the, now those of you who have stayed with me for this whole hour are going to be like, I remember him mentioning that we go to the Frankenstein Museum that Justin told us about. We never fucking heard of it. Was not on our plans. Neither was having French muscles. So, I mean, like, it's good to meet people. Um, no idea there's a fucking Frankenstein museum. Apparently, Mary Shelley, you know, there's the famous story about where she, uh, you know, they they made up the story when they were telling ghost stories to each other in Geneva. Oh, but I was like, oh, yeah, of course, she had to write the fucking novel at some point, And apparently she wrote it in Bath. So there's just this Frankenstein museum there. I was trying to figure out, it wasn't like Mary Shelley's house or anything. It was just like a convenient location, I guess. I'm sure they could be like, oh, we're not far from Mary Shelley's house, you know. So, we got the Frankenstein Museum in Bath. And uh, Dave Spears is watching. Hey, Dave, thanks for tuning in. Um, so, this is what Frankenstein, is, the monster, blah, blah, blah. This is what Frankenstein's monster is supposed to look like according to the novel. So apparently they had, the museum had this made. Um, and I mean, I could go on about that for a while. Uh, I'll try not to bore you with Frankenstein nerdiness. But uh, they had the 1910 movie. It was like the silent movie. And I don't think I've ever watched a silent movie, and I don't think I will again, but it was cool to do it. And they had one of those spook houses in the basement, like uh, Jason's Woods or something around here. Um, so it was, again, very polite little, oh, pardon me, may we scare you in this room? Uh, a British version of a, you know, haunted haunt. I guess they call them haunts, right? Um, but yeah, it was all the history of Mary Shelley's life, her life in Bath, blah, 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 blah. And then we have tickets for the Roman baths. Um, so I've also got a million pictures of this. I'm just going to show you the one for our purposes. Because uh, this is pretty cool. This is 
I, this must be on the ground floor, but this is what the Roman baths look like. I'll get my thing out of my nose there. <sighs> okay, so this is me at the Roman baths on the ground floor, and that's pretty much what it looks like. Um, and you could be forgiven for thinking, especially when you're going in, that that's all there is to it. We must have spent three hours there. There is so much architecture and history and they have the, um, the walking tour with like three or four levels. So there's like a kid's tour where they're like, hello, I'm Romulus and I work in the baths. And then there's like the adult tour where they're like, this is well, and then there's like the art architecture tour and the, oh, and there was just some, I don't know, asshole author. <laughs> I I say that, but he really started to sound like an asshole after a certain point. He was like, here's my opinion of the baths and Roman, the Roman baths and bath. And I'm like, who is this guy? It could just be me. That's what I should do. I should start going places and be like, do you need me to do audio for your museum tour? Um, but all that being said, so much history and information about, you know, the Roman time. Like you never even think about, you know, Roman Britain. But, like, it was just, like, fascinating. And, yes, I drank the waters of bath, and it just kind of tasted like warm piss. So save yourself that trouble. But we did. We, we tried the waters of bath that healed Mary Shelley and everybody the fuck else in bath. So bath was really cool. I think that's all my pictures. Oh, did I show you guys the Welsh breakfast? I don't think, I, don't, I may not have shown you this. So this is a fucking Welsh breakfast with a, the lava bread and custard and God all knows what else. Sorry, I'm just kind of going off of my pictures at this point. Um, so, bath was really cool. Then, But then the next day was our big super touristy day. And I was a little reluctant to do this, but... At the end of the day, I was like, like I was saying before, you're going to go to another country, at least see someone's. Like, we had agreed, we're not going to go hassle the guards at Buckingham Palace. We're not going to do... There's a lot of touristy shit we didn't want to do. But then I was like, you know what? Let's see Stonehenge. Let's see Ava Berry. I find this tour that's departing out of Bath. So, um... I think this is the... Yeah, that's probably Stonehenge. Okay. Um, so really, I'm really glad I did it. So we packed up the snacks that Kaylee gave us. Where, what did I do with them? Oh, yeah. So we packed up the snacks. We, uh, go hop on this bus. And I'm like, this is the stupidest touristiest thing. It was so amazing. Guys, if you go over there, Mad Max tours, like the, like the apocalyptic movie. But it's actually Madeline and Max. So we found out on the tour. So good. The dude was so fucking good. Didn't even sound like he was like doing the whole touristy thing. He was like a real living person. Knew me by name. Called me by name all, all the time. I think he was. An, he's, I think he said he was an ex cop in Hong Kong or something. And I was like, oh, that's a cop trick. Uh, I've I've had like cops and um, uh, teachers and stuff do that to me before. Where they're like. I'm going to memorize, and then I'm going to seat the people in my bus so that I know them. But yeah, he's like, oh, hey, Stephen. Oh, yeah, hey, good to see you, Stephen. But aside from that, so good. So we go to Stonehenge first thing. So, yeah, there's me at Stonehenge. Um, and I immediately had to text uh, Mary San Giovanni and Summer Cannon and let them know that my ley lines were better than their ley lines. <laughs> uh, witches. They're witches. And, oh, well, am I allowed to say that? Oh, fuck it. If, if you didn't know, now you found out. Uh, but yeah, they, they're witches and they believe in all the ley lines and stuff. Um, which, but apparently does not seem to be the case. Apparently it was just like a astrological, or astrological, astronomical thing, like, you would just, like, stand in the center. Oh, so, right. So, you can't go to Stonehenge. I guess everybody knows that. You can just walk around Stonehenge. But then when you go to the Stonehenge Visitor Center, 
they have a virtual, uh, it's kind of like a planetarium where they're like, this is what it would be like if we allowed people to stand in Stonehenge. But you, you know, you can't because people are assholes and they chip away at the rocks and shit. So, uh, Claire C. Riley, the famous Claire C. Riley, I will not forget your middle initial. I learned that during the summer of zombie 2015. Claire C. Riley always comes with a C. Um, so yeah, people are chipping the fucking chips out of the Stonehenge. Um, but we got to have a virtual, um, Stonehenge on like whatever it is, the vernal equinox and the winter solstice or whatever. And they're like, we, we don't know what it is, but it seems to just be a cool place to watch the vernal equinox and the winter solstice. Um, and then they also had a little fake uh, prehistoric um, village set up there, which was even cooler in a way. And they were like, I don't know, it's all very mysterious. I, I get it. It's whatever, 10, 000, five, ten thousand 10,000 years ago or whatever. We don't know anything. How can we know anything about these people who left us a bunch of big fucking rocks? Um, so it's all very mysterious and stuff, but they're like, this is what a hut would have looked like, we think. This is what a paddock for a sheep, you know, land of sheep would have looked like, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that was cool. We hop on the bus. And again, I really, I, I, honestly, guys, if you go over there, do the Mad Max tour. I was very, very, very happy. I might not have been so happy if I'd been doing touristy bullshit. Jane Music is watching. Hey, Jane, thanks for tuning in. I might not have been so happy if I'd been doing touristy bullshit for the first four days and then did that. But for that being our first real touristy bullshit time, great tour. So then we go to Ava Berry. Now, if you don't know, Ava Berry is better than Stonehenge. It's a town with the rocks, uh, the obelisks. Um, but you can walk and, and you can get up and touch them. And I sat in an obelisk, um, which the tour guide told us it was just for luck. My partner keeps telling me it's for fertility. So I'll keep the luck. You guys can have the fertility. Uh, but anyway, I sat at, what was it called? The seat of the de the devil's chair or something. Um, it was really cool. Really nice. And, and it's in the middle of a town. So if you wanted to just go and do like, let me have a drink at the pub. Um, and then we bought, if Christy's still watching, we bought some stuff for her to thank her for watching the cats, um, there in Ava Berry. Um, yeah, so th then again with the bullshitty witchery and, you know, witchcraft and astrology, they have, a um, shop like that. And, uh, it was a really, really cool little town with a little promenade of obelisks. Like, oh, here's just this fucking quaint. English village, and also prehistoric history outside. So we do that. Then we go to uh, Laycock, which I know I'm terrible. I never got farther than the Goblet of Fire, so I don't know my Harry Potter. But Laycock is a town... There's something about the town, like it's owned by the government... So, like, people can't come in and fuck it up. So it's like it was in the 1680s or whatever. Um, so they filmed a lot of Harry Potter and, like, Pride and Prejudice and a bunch of stuff there. So I'm like, eh, okay, whatever. Like, it's cool. It was cool to me to see a uh, old-timey British town. But I wasn't like, ooh, this is where Dumbledore tripped over the... Whatever. I don't care. Um, but, fucking weird. Uh... It was Camilla, Queen Camilla's um, hometown, I guess, and her church was there. So we walked from Queen Camilla's church to, like, the house where Harry Potter's parents were killed or something. They're, like, a block away from each other or something. So it's just like this, you know, we're like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, funny little little town in England. It was really cool. Um so, and then the last stop we made was the Cotswolds. It was a town called, it was not a castle, but it was a town called Castle Combe. And it was, 
like I don't know. I didn't really follow entirely what the Cotswolds are. I get it's an area, and it's got this certain breed of villages. So it, to my thinking, it was like it's hot fuzz, I guess, like a hot fuzz type villages or the Cotswolds, um, and uh, Castle Coombe is like the one that the tour guides had selected as like here's here's your Cotswolds because they also had a Cotswolds tour. So I was wondering if at the end of the Stonehenge tour, they're like, here's one of the Cotswolds in case you want to go on the Cotswolds tour. So I'm guessing on the Cotswolds tour, they're like, oh, and there's Stonehenge in case you want to go on the Stonehenge tour. Just saying. That's my assumption. So that was really cool. Fish and chips again that night at uh, Bill's, which I guess is a uh, franchise there. In Bath. And then the next day, we go to London. And London's the last leg of our tour. We're flying back out from London. Um, I don't know if I have any good pictures. All right. Oh, no, no, no. I got a couple pictures of London. Okay. Oh, I forgot about the most exciting part about Bath, though. He's Bean! He's Bean! This is... So this is the throwback. Apparently, Poundland is really what it's called over there. That's the equivalent of the dollar store. So, you know, if you're ever in Britain, just tell some, walk up to somebody and say, I want to go to Poundland with you. See what happens. Don't, don't write me. Don't let me know what happens to you. Um, but apparently it's real. And I immediately had to text Kaylee and say, it's real, it's real. He's been, he's been. Um... That was our last night in Bath. We go to London the next day, and that's the last leg of our tour. Um, so we stayed in what's called the Bankside. London, obviously, is an enormous town. Uh, and the Bankside, I don't know, I got the impression it's kind of the cheaper part, but it was not bad. It was really nice. So... It was about a 20-minute walk to uh, the Eye, which I don't know if people are still mad about the Eye. I, I don't know. It's been there for 20 years, so I guess it's part of the thing. But here's the Eye, okay? So we're about 20 minutes from there. Here's the Eye, and then right across the river from the Eye is Big Ben. So, uh, yeah, so you get... It's the bank side's kind of like the wrong side or whatever, but... It's really cool. Um, we uh, we were staying... So we were very close to the Shard, which is this enormous um, tower over there in London. Oh, and right by the Tower of London, actually, was right across the river from us. And uh, the one thing I wanted to do was I wanted to have an eel pie, but we were nowhere near the eel pie shops. I guess they're in East London... And I looked it up because I was like, I'm ready. I'm going to get an eel pie. 45-minute bus ride or something. I'm like, that is not worth it for a fucking eel pie. Like, I will have it at some point, I am sure. Um, I will make do. So we went to, we did end up going to the Borough Market, which is also on, on the bank side. Um, and why I mentioned that is I want to show you so I, in fact, had fish and chips as well, which is not normally my thing. But we went to this place in the borough market called Fish with an exclamation mark. And apparently this is, and I'm not making this up, this is apparently the best fish and chips in Great Britain. So that's, they apparently won some kind of competition, like the most recent fish and chips competition for the island they won. So I was like, you know what, I guess I've got to then, you know, like, it's right there. I will have your fish and chips. Um, so the first day that we were there, I tried to be all like, let's go and do some museums. Jesus Christ, guys. Well, okay. I mean, first of all, we're, I'm an asshole because I went in July. I know. Well, you know, you know what? It's Kaylee's fault for getting married in July. So blame her. But don't go to fucking London in July if you want to see anything. 
we go to the, I think it was the Natural History Museum, line, Peter Papuni is watching. Hey, Peter, thanks for tuning in. The line is down the block, okay, the city block of London, of kids. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I've seen dinosaur skeletons before. We don't have to go, I don't have to go to any natural history museum that bad. So we looked up, and like I said earlier, we didn't want to have to, we didn't want to do the double-decker bus and the, you know, teasing the guards at the palace and such and such. Um, I mean, we wanted to do some stuff, but we got all, we saw a lot in Bath, actually, and some stuff in London. So, I'm drawing a blank on my pictures here. Oh, here we go. All right. So, we said, what's the other London landmark that's right around the corner from there? It's Harrods. Um, so... This is not the picture I wanted to show you guys, but it's the one I brought over. This is the perfume area of Harrods, which is apparently a um, world-famous department store. Um, and it was, it was enormous. It was like six stories or something. We walked around Harrods all day. We were there for hours. Uh... Everything imaginable that you could want to buy if you want to pay like three times the price for it. Mm. In any case, it was a fun experience. Um, oh, the other thing I forgot to tell you, we were on the bank side. What was really close by was the Tate Modern Museum. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of modern art. But it was a very close by museum. I like to support the arts. Go to this museum. I remembered why I'm not a big fan of modern art, but, you know, good for them for expressing themselves in various ways. Uh, there was a really cool piece, though, I gotta say. There's a piece called Babel, like the Tower of Babel, and it's this, like, it must have been 30 feet tall. Uh, I think my partner's got a picture of it. Well, whenever our pictures all go up, um, I did not take enough pictures, but she covered me, so we're good. Um, it's like a... Debbie, Harrods have just opened their Christmas department. It's amazing. Do you buy? Do you actually buy stuff there? It's it seemed crazy expensive to me, Debbie. But you do you. I mean, get that Father Christmas or, or whatever you're looking for. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's this tower of radios all tuned to different stations, like the Tower of Babel. It was fucking awesome. And like that was it was an experience. You don't you know you see pictures of shit. This is why you go to art museums to actually see the art. So, you know, in a way, modern art maybe is better for that than, you know, oh, well, here's another. No, I just look. Okay, so I'm not crazy. I just bought remotes for my Wii. So I have an idea of what they cost. Uh, I want to say it was $60 or something. Harrods was charging like 80 pounds, which is close to twice the cost and i was like and the reason why i say those is just because i don't i don't know enough about what stuff costs to be like oh this is insanely expensive but i definitely got the impression harrods was insanely expensive um oh yeah so we saw the tate modern museum that was really cool um we went to the borough market um to have the fish and chips we went to Bill's again. That's when we found out because my partner's like, oh, we should go to this place. There's another Bill's here. And, and I was like, hmm, I think this is just a franchise. But, you know, whatever. You can never have too much fish and chips, right? Um, saw Harrods. We saw the Tate. We tried to see the Natural History Museum. Um, oh, so then the next day, and you all can make fun of me. I don't care. Whatever. Whatevs. I'm secure my masculinity. The next day we went to the Shard for tea. after Like afternoon tea. Um, which I was super down with. It was really cool. Um, you just have tea and then you have like cakes. And then you... Uh, or you have like sandwiches. And then you have like cakes. And it's like, I guess... It's in between lunch and dinner or something. But what we really wanted to do was the shards like 72 t stories or something. And you can either pay like 25 pounds to go to the 72nd story or you can go have food. 
which will probably be like 25 pounds. I mean, maybe double that, but whatever. And then you just get to go to the restaurant and look out, you know, from this enormous uh, uh, tower. So we go to this place called Aqua Shard and we have tea. And it's very cool. I, I was very, I, it was very enjoyable. I'm glad I did it. Um, it was a little too like twee. It was this Peter Pan tea, um, which I gather that they all are because everything, every tea that we looked up, it was either like Alice in Wonderland tea, or this or that tea, and I'm like, you could just fucking give me tea and fucking finger foods, and I'd be fine. But you know, we had to. Have, oh, here's TikTok the crocodile. Here's the Peter Pan shaped cookie and Tinkerbell, and I'm gonna spread the thing. Um, so like I could have done without the whole thing, but maybe that's just a part of tea and I'm just not embracing it, but super cool. So relaxing. And I realized at that point I was like, we've been to this museum. We've been to that museum. We've been there and there and there everywhere. It's nice to just sit and take a breath and take in the city. It's such a clean, beautiful city. My partner kept comparing it to New York city, which of course, you know, we've both been to several times and she's right. It's kind of a dump. It's kind of dirty. There's a lot of, and I don't know. We, I guess we were on the bad part of town, but it didn't seem like there was a lot of like undesirable, you know, areas or whatever. Um, but London was just very, so nice, just beautiful. Um, so then for our final day, what, what, you know, so those of you know, my partner owns the air studio uh, the balloon store, um, which goes hand in hand with being floral design, uh, cause she was a florist for like 20 years. So what she really wanted to go see was this place called the Kew Gardens. And what the Kew Gardens are, I could go in exhaustive detail cause I just came back from there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was George the third cause it was Charlotte and George the third. I guess they just like combined their royal estates and were like gardens, cool. Um, so it's just this enormous. Um, I guess conservatory is not the right word. Like conser there are conservatories on it, but it's just this enormous royal gardens. Um, so, and like for instance, they have this huge like life sized pagoda. Um, and again, my, uh, there are a lot more pictures than this, but I'm just, you know, kind of showing you guys some stuff. And here's like Hercules fighting the uh, dragon um, by the riverside. And uh, they just have just every plant imaginable. Um, and I posted, some of you will have seen on TikTok, I posted a video of myself in front of a cactus and I said, can you get, I'm abroad right now. Can you guess where I am? It's the only thing I did to say I wasn't in the country. I'll, I'll admit that. Um, but the joke being, I was actually at the conservatory in Kew Gardens, which was like a greenhouse where they were growing like cacti and like jungle plants and like enormous lily pads and stuff. Um, so we just spent all day in the Kew Gardens um, just... Uh, you know, I think my partner was just in heaven, you know, just every flower, plant, anything you can imagine. Um, and I'm kind of going long. I'm going super long. My phone's about to run out of uh, time here. But yeah, then we, you know, then, you know, we left and it was the whole trip back to Newark and everything, which I can just abbreviate with saying, you know, it sucked. And we got to go back to Iceland. You know, it doesn't suck that much because, again, we're flying business class. We got to go back to Iceland. Um, but at that point, it's like we were so sad to leave. Um, we just could have spent, you know, a, a million more years there. Um, yeah, I think next time we're going to have to at least take, you know, three weeks or whatever. But still, it was like it didn't feel like we, you know, cheaped out, um, uh, like cheated on the country. Like we, we saw a bunch of the stuff. We also just got to relax, you know, we got to go to the wedding, it was amazing. Um, yeah, so I don't think I saw any questions. I could vamp for time if anybody has any questions. Or I guess there were a couple questions, but I answered them as we were going. 
Um, but yeah, I think that's the official section here. Oh no, I do have a couple things. For those of you that are fans, um, so get your questions in because I'm about to be done in you know five minutes here. Unless people have more questions, uh, yeah, I think that's all the pictures. But I did want to apologize to uh, Paul Goblish because uh, I think the day I got on the plane, I got an email from him saying that there are uh, signature, sheet, signature sheets that I have to sign for the Brain Eater Jones uh, 10 year anniversary edition. So I'm sorry, Paul. And you sent them to the wrong place. They are at my, um, they're at my uh, tenant's house. So you, you sent them to the wrong place. That's why I still don't have them. But that is why it's taken me two weeks to sign those signature sheets, which you can all get excited about the 10-year anniversary of Brain Eater Jones coming out later this year from Thunderstorm Books. Um, but also, it's been a while since I've done this, so you know, my newest release, my newest, you know, self-release is The Thing Under Your Bed. Make sure to grab a copy. I finally got my, you know, paperback copy. Covered by Sharon Wasco. I think it's amazing. It's very short, too. You're, you're, you're all going to love it. Um, really proud of that one. And then I also got to come home when I came home to, and this is very exciting. If you guys don't follow my um, MailChimp, you should. Negative Space 2. And if you don't know what's in this, this contains a return to the world of the hematophages. In fact, it contains a return to the Borgvart and the crew of the Borgvart from the original Hamadophages. So if you have not yet picked up your copy of Negative Space 2, make sure you grab it for Derelictus. Kaylee Dobbs, did you try the chocolate yet? We did. We tried the digestives, which sounds like a terrible... <laughs> it sounds like a... Tums or something, but it said they're actually cookies. Um, we tried the digestives and the Jaffa cakes, and they were lovely, as you say. Um, so thank you. Uh, thanks for inviting us. Great to see you. This is all directed toward Kaylee and Debbie, uh, aka Mom. Um, but yeah, no, we'll we will be back. No, goddammit, not the biscuits, the galaxy, or the Cadbury's. <laughs> well, this is the first time I've ever seen you swear. Uh, <laughs> no, I guess we have not tried the galaxy or the Cadbury's. We did try, when we were in Weston, we tried galaxy uh, hot chocolate. So, okay, I guess we'll go and have some of the chocolate now. You're very animated about this. Ron Pollock is watching. Hey, Ron, good to see you. We were just wrapping up, unless you, unless literally you've got a question, Ron. Kaylee, I feel very strongly that you try the shock. Okay, all right. How, how, how about this? Since we're live, uh, haven't had dinner yet. Okay, what do you want me to try? You want me to try the? Um, Debbie said it was great meeting you, but caramel buttons. This seems hard to open. Or the Crunchy Rocks. Uh, yes, eat it. Okay, all right. Caramel. This is make, making a great live video. Actually, this is kind of a good live video thing. Galaxy. Galaxy. Oh, Galaxy. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you gave me any Galaxy. Oh, Galaxy Minstrel. Okay. Galaxy Minstrels, ladies and gentlemen. Amy Lauer, we have not yet because we had so much food, but don't worry. No Steven Galaxy. Is this, is this, this is Galaxy. Galaxy Minstrel? The life-changing Galaxy? All right. Okay, here we go. You get to see this live on it. Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. This looks like it needs to be resealed. Mmm. No, that is good. Pleasure worth sharing. Okay, it's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of got the feel of like a junior mint. 
but it's not minty. It's about the size and, uh, okay. The life changing galaxy. I'm sure I put a bar of plain galaxy in that bag. It's possible that I, err that it was somehow mysteriously eaten before you got the bag. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So these are galaxy minstrels. Um, they are, are about the size of a junior mint and, uh, but crunchy. All right. There's a bag of something in here. Keep looking. Oh, all right. Okay. Is this it? Galaxy. Okay, Galaxy something or other. This is a, what do they call it? A mukbang? You know what would be funny? My phone's at 1%. If I suddenly conked out while I was doing this. Okay. All right. Here we go. Galaxy uh, Smooth Milk. Oh, that is good. Um, no, that's really good. It tastes like a Hershey bar, but with a lot more milk. Like, I didn't know that it was possible to have milkier milk chocolate than that. So are these, yeah, these just break like a Hershey bar. Okay. Yeah, all right, so. There you go, everybody. Galaxies. Now I'll get addicted to these. I won't be able to get more. I'll be like Zoidberg in the uh, anchovies. Okay, Cadbury's is even milkier. Okay. All right. Well, y'all got to see, wow, unplanned mukbang and uh, extremely unplanned fucked up technology and everything. But thank you, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I think we are going to call it there. Um, you know, I might start trying to do these more often. I really, really want to do more um, live streaming like this. I want to start doing it maybe more like on a schedule, like every Tuesday or something might be good. I always mean to do it every Wednesday, but I go to the office on Wednesdays, so that's not going to be a good one. But, hey, thanks, everybody. Get over to the U.K., have a good evening. Uh, cheerio.